You know, we had never done anything like this before. Uh, we were told probably can't do it, um, especially when we were going to do it and not try to spend any money at all. There were a lot of things that made it hard, but the people weren't one of them. The cast and crew we had was just amazing. Totally sold out and dedicated to do whatever it took to pull it off. It was hard. I mean, it, it you know, the, the acting and, and doing the scenes was fine, but the work, it was hard. But the thing about that is nobody there added to making that hard. Everybody there kind of came together and it made it easier. You know, I think one of the things that I enjoyed most was uh, the camaraderie. You know, everybody coming together and I don't think there were any attitudes or egos or anything like that. Just, I think everybody being there realizing that they were there for something that was greater than them, something that they really enjoyed and regardless of how long it was going to take or how many times the take had to be redone or this, that, and the other, just how everybody really, really seemed to want to be there. The times we had at Roy's was just hilarious and it was made, it made it worth being there from, you know, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning till 10, 11 o'clock at night. You couldn't help but have fun. I mean, it was tiring, like, you know, people have mentioned and said, but so worth it by the end of the day uh, to know that you had done that and been a part of it, and then you've heard your whole life about actors and actresses talking about, you know, we just sit around and wait. You know, the only thing, unfortunately, we didn't have a trailer to get to sit around and wait in. <laughs> we joked about that a lot. but. It is a lot of that because the production is so tedious and it takes so long and and people some people may think you're just setting up a camera and you go and it's not like that mm -hmm. and we all learned that you know soon quickly on the set that it wasn't like that but the things that happen behind the scenes and the laughter and the moments and how you really really got to know somebody you know um, and their attitudes and when it was when you were tired and it was hot and the real people came out and then you found out you still loved them anyway and they were still your friends and you loved being around them so it was just worth it all it was great we all had this common purpose of you know we wanted to do something to impact people's lives and to tell them about about God and about Jesus and um, it was just uh, you know some of the the other things along the way that, that always got rolled into it and Something that I've, that I've learned is that, that friendships that you make when you're serving alongside other people are different than just other relationships that you might make uh, along your way. It's just a, it's a different kind of thing. It's a different kind of thing. It's just like, uh, uh, what we call it, the group. You know, we just all met together. We were together so much that we got to love one another, you know, and still do. God used that to give me new friends. You, there's no way you can, you can um, anticipate that or have any idea what it's like if you've never done it. Uh, but, you, you know, all the different takes and so forth, but really just the fun. I, I think about <laughs> the thing about the, the candy dish and Roy's and, and how Myra was always trying to slap people's hands out of it. And, would you care for a mint? <laughs> Get your hands off those mints. to buy another bag of mints for this set, I'm going to beat someone. Keep your hands out of my mints. And that poor cake, that I understand that poor cake is still around somewhere in her freezer and might even be used in movies to come. But uh, uh, every time I plug in and watch the movie, it's like, you know, a reunion, old friends showing up. Oh, yeah, so. When the uh, was, uh, the necklace or the bracelet, which was it? Yeah, the necklace. You know, and he goes out and uh, and buys the necklace and comes in, you know, and gives it to her, or, or he tells her he's got it or whatever, you know. And I guess that was probably, to me, was really, really something else. 
What I like was, I like movies where I see a person get transformed, and it's through maybe um, a person who's come to himself and really who he is, and that's Tad. I like that scene right there with um, Ray J, I guess, was sharing with the love of the Lord with him. And, uh, and he was down to the, what was so neat is Tad, mighty, make a lot of money, don't care about my lane, all these, you know, ethics and he didn't care, it's about me. But Tad, you can see where Tad just got down to the very bottom and he, and, and Ray J just sharing with him, he knew, Tad knew where he needed to go and that, that's God. But the whole banana pudding scene for me was very special because, and I don't know that I've ever even shared this with Bobby and Dale, but for me, banana pudding has always been a special thing. And um, I got to give my testimony about side order to a church not too long ago. And one of the things that I shared was that on Sunday mornings, uh, my mom, my dad's a, a pastor, so on Sunday mornings my mom always got up early and she always made a big huge dinner. And when we get home on, from church on Sunday mornings, if we did something very special that, that week, or if my mom just wanted to let us know that she loved us, banana pudding was what she'd make. Man, I love banana pudding. Big old slices of bananas, drowning in yellow pudding. Mm. Surrounded by vanilla wafer. Oh, man. Mm. You know, I've never tasted manna, but man, if it tasted anything like this banana pudding, I wouldn't have been one of those children in Israel complaining. Nah, trust me. I think I could survive any wilderness journey as long as I had some banana pudding in the cooler. Now just think if someone was to walk through that door over there. He's never seen a banana. He's like from, um, from the Ukraine or something. He's never tasted pudding. He's never even heard of a vanilla wafer. Now, I have to describe banana pudding to him. How it tastes how it smells, what it looks like. Now, how am I going to do that? It's almost impossible. Hmm. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you'd do. It's a tough situation. When I know he'd love it, I just have to convince him to believe me, to accept it, to try it. But, you know, it's still a personal decision. He has to experience it. I can't eat it for him. The words I have does it no justice. I just know that I love it, and he would too. Here you go. Grass be up just a second. Okay. I can tell him how to get it, but it means nothing if he won't accept it if you won't try it. I mean, what does red look like? What does an apple taste like? What does mint smell like? There are just some things in life that need to be experienced. We don't have the vocabulary to simply describe it to someone and do it justice. Explain it to you? Rationalize it? I can't. It's up to you. So to take banana pudding and put the salvation plan to it, for me, was just a phenomenal thing. It was just um, an extra special scene. And the whole, the whole scene, just watching Demetrius and, and Bobby and, and how it evolved, it was just. I just felt I was supposed to tell you that. Oh, if you ever want some banana pudding, just let me know be my treat. It was just really neat and um, I, I've never looked at banana pudding the same since. Mm -hmm. So. Well I think my favorite scene in the whole movie, there, 
was the scene where Reese is talking to Chansey at the counter. It's closing time. They they're sitting there folding silverware, and and Chansey's talking about how hard it is and no child support and family's not around and and how she felt bad and uh, Reese's telling her. That's what a real man does. He stays. When times are good, he stays. When times are bad, he stays. When it seems there's no way out and all else fails, he stays. I've had uh, a couple of people quote lines from that. To know um, that what I said or what was said touched a nerve with somebody and meant something to somebody. The scenes where when Bobby came out you know, and he, he sat down, and then he realized that was him. That could be me. That could be any of us sitting, you know, laying there. Um, just the impact that that scene had was just, was just amazing. My favorite scene of all was the part that me and Bobby did. We were sitting over in the corner at a table and I, and I was praying with him and I was talking with him. And people would look at that and see, okay, you know, he's praying with him. And, and I think it was a pivotal moment that people could see somebody witnessing to another person and praying with them. And I think it was people actually seeing another person's heart changing at that point. So that was my favorite. The uh, uh, Nan Dyer's character is a school teacher and they're talking about how difficult it is in the classroom and so forth and that quote unquote rookie teacher just being blown away by some of the things that they've done to keep their sanity. So it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of good scenes like that. Dale and I developed a, a really good relationship during Soaring. And he kept telling me, you gotta play this character. And I'm like, okay. And he said, and I really want George Wilson to play Leon. And he said, have you met Mr. George? And I said, no, never met him, but I've heard a lot about him. And the minute he walked in, he just, he looked so much like my grandfather, I was just immediately comfortable with him. Yeah, I remember the first night I come in and she said, uh, uh, introduced herself to me and said, it's, it's gonna be great uh, having uh, doing this movie with you or something of that effect, you know. And just like we'd known each other from that point on, you know, like we know each other all our lives. And I never had seen her before until I walked in that night there. He was, he was just so real and um, and it was just a, a really good fit. And, and Dale kept telling me, it's gonna be a perfect fit. It's gonna be a perfect fit, and it was. Dale and I had talked about a lot of things in scene 52 that was gonna happen that night. Dale says, I got this idea. What if we have Steve Wilson play George's son in the movie? Wow, what an idea. You know, you start thinking about everything that they've been through, and we're still going through at the time, and you think, yeah, yeah, that, that, that'd be great. Boy, were we wrong. It wasn't just great, it was fantastic. You know, I didn't know, I guess, you're almost finished with the production, and Dale called me and said, okay, you know, how about you doing this part? And uh, I said, okay, you know, and of course, uh, I've had health problems this past year, and Dad has too, and. And I was just thankful that I was, you know, felt good enough to be able to, uh, to say yes. And actually, the day of the, or the night of the shoot, uh, you know, was fe feeling real good. And I didn't have a clue. You know, I did, I knew that I was I was sitting there in the back of my mind thinking, okay, now why is Dale having them do this over and over again? I was I was just sitting there thinking to myself, man, that's golden. He did it. He nailed his lines. What are we What are we doing here? I was there. Um, I had no clue how it was all going to turn out. I had no clue. I mean, I had no clue it was even happening. I mean, th when I talked to Donna, because she was there that night, and I did didn't think she had had a scene that night. Um, then that's when she told me that she was there that for Eddie. You know, that Eddie was going to play his son. Well, that night, Bobby kept running out the door every few minutes, and I kept going, "What is wrong with him? Why is he leaving?" And I thought. 
that he was maybe a little upset about something. And so we kept shooting this scene over and I kept going, what are they looking for? Oh, what a, what a night. I stand there at the end of the counter there and George was there and Eddie Cates went through the run through with him. And you know, he came in several times with Eddie doing it and with Eddie doing it. And I just remember Dale telling him, George, no matter what happens, you know, just remember, stay in character. Then finally Dale says, why don't you try actually going out the door and coming in? And he kept saying, no matter what happens, just stay in character. I'm like, well, what does he expect us to do? You know, it was what I kept thinking. Well, I was, I was not nervous. Uh, I, I was very calm, very uh, peaceful about it. Uh, I, I did think that I'd have a chance to do two or three takes in case I messed up. I didn't realize until I got out, I think when I really got there to the door, and uh, I guess it was uh, Bobby and Dale emphasized that, you know, you've only got one chance. <laughs> and I'm thinking, boy, the pressure is on me here, you know, uh, to make this thing right. And, uh, and so I didn't have time to be scared or uh, apprehensive about uh, doing anything. Uh, you know, you guys said, okay, you got to do this, do this, and do this, and um, I, I don't know, it was just, it was, it was almost like, well, it was not almost like it, it was, that like God had his hand right on each one of us, and especially me, because I, I didn't have a chance to make a mistake there, I had to, I had to get it right, so. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I just think, well, Eddie will be back here in a minute, you know, they had no idea that he was, uh, that he was coming. In fact, his mother called him, asked him where he's, where he's going. He said, we're going to eat supper. He, he wouldn't let the cat out of the bag eat. He wouldn't, <laughs> he wouldn't tell his mother that he was coming up there. And Laura, I'd look at her and she had this funny look on her face. And I kept thinking, what is going on here? We're gonna do this thing. I said, okay, we've already done it a couple of times. We're gonna do it one more time. So, um, you know, when I, when I saw Steve come in, it, there was just something about it because you, you identified so much with both of them, and you you knew that they'd been through so much personally um, with one another, and it was it it almost was like like I'd say like you shouldn't have, like you shouldn't have been there like it was such a personal moment between both of them, and it was almost like you know all the movie stuff was just ancillary to what was really going on be between the two. When the door opened and I saw Steve walk in, it was all I could do to stay in character. In fact. I can tell, you know, when I watched the film that I actually lost it for a minute. I entered the door. I remember, uh, you know, uh, you guys had told me, you know, I had to stay over, I had to stay out of uh, Dad's line of sight. And of course, I think you'd instructed him to be sitting there looking down, eating his yeah, pie. Eating pie and drinking coffee. Yeah, drinking oh. coffee and eating pie. <laughs> when Steve came up and put his hand on George's shoulder, It was just such a special moment to actually get to be a part of. Yeah, it wasn't too long before that that he had given us word to come to my house, and it was hard. He come to our house and told us about his condition, and see whenever he oh, choke up again. <laughs> whenever he come to the house and told me about his condition, and then when he walked in and put his arm around me, it just well, just broke my heart. And, I saw Steve come in the door. I thought, well, he's just going to watch the scene. And then he went up as, I think it was High Dad or something like that, and put his arms around him. And just George was just like you hit him with a baseball bat. Um, you know, as I walked down, and uh, I didn't realize how emotional that scene was going to be, even though you were telling me what to do. And, and Dale was saying, you know, this is, I really, this is just going to be great. I didn't realize how great it was going to be until it actually, I put my arm around Dad and I saw him cry. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Dad. <laughs> Merry Christmas. It wasn't acting, it was real, <laughs> you know. And it's just a different touch, you know. When he touched me, it was different to what it was when Eddie touched me. Girls, this this is my son. That touch, you know, I just had that touch for spot of the sun. It's nice to meet you. It is. I'm Reese. Oh, I didn't I'm really I'm understand or feel the magnitude of it until that moment, right at that moment. I just thought I was going in doing a 
a scene, you know, just another, just another uh, scene that would be in the movie. I had no, uh, no clue that it was going to be uh, turn out to be that big of a scene and that emotional of a scene for not only us, for but for people in the cast and for people that probably hundreds of people that have told me, uh, you know, how much that it really meant to them. And this will be something that will be a heritage for their family and for, you know, their children and their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren, and something, it's a special moment called on video that they'll be able to share for generations to come, and we were just a small part of it. But I'm gonna keep these things, see, and, uh, and, and I'll give them to him uh, at some point in time, and he can give them to his sons, and, and we just hope that it'll move on down through generations. They can see what their uh, father or great-grandfather did, and uh, what their uh, grandfather did, and great-grandfather, you know, <laughs> And, uh, you know, maybe to have a, some kind of impact on their lives, you know, that we don't even know about now. You know, as you, as you look at your family tree, you want, uh, you want your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren and, uh, to, uh, to know who you are and who you were and uh, for them to be able to reflect back on something like that later on and, and to see us two, you know, in that moment, uh, uh, hopefully it was, you know, captured and it'll mean something not only to this generation but to uh, those generations to come for us personally, uh, you know, and also to, you know, to people, uh, maybe families that are having trouble out there, uh, to be able to see that, you know, it, you know, you can love you, your, your parents and the parents can love their children because, you know, I see so many families that are broken where there's, there's no love between the father and the son or the you know the, the mother and the daughter or vice versa and uh, I think that was an example of you know of love uh, for us personally and um, because we both have had illness uh, over the last two or three years and uh, so that it was a closeness for us or for me and I know it was for him uh, on a personal level uh, that's uh, that's it's hard du to duplicate. We were doing this not for our glory, but for the glory of the Lord. One of the, I want to say, cutest things, or, or just it made, makes you feel good on the inside, was the night after the debut, uh, after the initial debut, when everybody was coming out, and and uh, Mr. George was out there, and I remember he had on a, a real nice uh, blazer or uh, and a great and a, a, a great coat and a, a red vest, a re real, just looking real sharp. And all these little old ladies were around him wanting his autograph. And I thought, that is just so cool. You know, if, if nobody else was asked for an autograph, the fact that, and it, it just, it made me feel good. But uh, I don't think any of us, in, including uh, Brother George, that, that was not anything that we anticipated or that we were even looking for. I don't, I don't care for the notoriety or for the fame or anything like that for this, you know, but it's a leaping point from there. You know, I can ask them, well, really, what'd you think about the movie? And, and it's, you know, I'm not a great witness at times, but when I can, when a door is open like that, I mean, you've got to step through it. And to me, I kind of use it as a leaping board to say, you know, well, you know, it was a great project to work for, and, and I hope God blessed it, and I hope he blessed you, you know, when you got to see it, or some people that you were with. So it's great. But I'll never forget the first night that we watched the movie, the debut. Uh, I was sitting up in the balcony, and my parents was there, my stepdad was there, my brothers and sisters was there, and uh, whenever he presented her with the box, as soon as he went like this and it showed the box, my stepdad goes, oh, he bought the necklace, and just everybody just cracked up, you know, and it was like, you could tell people were getting it. People were getting the movie and that was a very, that's what we wanted all along was for people to get the movie and to understand, you know, the different, the different um, emotions with it and the fact that, you know, Christ does need to be the center of it. It was like the anticipation being at the hospital when a child or a grandchild is born and you know it's gonna be a wonderful thing. You know it's gonna be a great thing, 
but you cannot anticipate how great it is till you hold that little thing in your arms, okay? And I know there's nothing that can compare with that, but that's the only analogy that I can use to say that we had worked so hard, and, and, and you know, my part was just one, one little part. And, and some people had bigger parts, some people had smaller parts, but we had all worked together for months and months and months. We, we knew how our little segment was going to be, but I don't think any of us really knew what the whole thing was going to be. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> uh, because I, I really didn't know what was going on down at Roy's Grill. I mean, uh, just hear little tidbits here and there, but I didn't, I didn't realize how it was going to come out. That was very special. Because it wasn't just the people that worked on the movie, but it was the families that had given us up, so to speak, to work on that movie. They got to see it. And uh, so that was special for me to have my husband there because he was very supportive of it. And, uh, you know, I don't, we don't have small children at home anymore. So it was, though I do like to see him every once in a while, <laughs> you know, it, but it's a time consuming endeavor. And uh, it, but it is so worth it. It is so worth it. And, and I think hopefully other people's families felt that it was worth it too, because Rick did. He, he felt like a good thing happened there. The sacrifice is made, the work put into it. And here's the thing that, that I didn't even know the whole story. I didn't know beginning to end in the middle parts, I, I, I worked on my scenes. I knew they would be in there somewhere or trusted they would be in that movie somewhere. But it didn't bother me that I didn't know what was going on. And I don't think it bothered anybody else. You know, all the other characters and, and, the, and the folks involved behind or in front of the camera, it didn't bother them if they didn't know the whole story. They just trusted that God was gonna use this and that it was gonna get put together like it should be put together. And, you know, it didn't bother them. And, and when, it, when it came together, and it was that night, and, and, you know, we got to see it, and before a crowd of, of our peers, of, the, of, you know, congregation, or people that were bringing family members in that may not be at church, or attend a church, or, or even have heard, you know, much about Jesus, it was just, it was special, you know. It, uh, I, I, yeah, it was great to look up and see my face on the air talking and, and acting in a movie, but you know, I, that's not what I did it for. I, I was just glad that this project got put together and that I could be a part of it. It was worth every penny. Every time, every ounce of time, it was worth it. You know, that's the one thing God gives us right now is time, and that's, it was worth every bit of time that I spent, and I would do it again in a heartbeat. I don't, I don't think you could even dream up the scenario. Um, the, the, the obstacles that, that God just had before us and, and just allowed us to see how He weaved in and out of it and around it. Mm -hmm. And I know that the, the premiere night, all of those people coming in and we were standing there behind the counter and selling those TVs and people coming out and just absolutely weeping. You know, and we were sitting in there and so even, even while we were on set and, and something happened and I can remember um, Bobby and Dale turn around going, wow, oh, that was good, that was good stuff. That's a keeper. And you, that's a keeper, you know, and so, and so, you know, we'd shift things around. But then when you saw it all up on the screen and saw the effect it was having on the people who had not taken part in it, had not been on the behind the scenes set, and then to, rushing to the counter to get a copy of the DVD, I mean, it just, I mean, just, would take your breath away. And then to hear, uh, oh, I sent it to my son who's in the military. You know, he's in Iraq and he shared it with his buddies. And 
couldn't conceive when Dale said, we're going to make a movie. You know, and we're thinking, okay, well, we've done, you know, The Soaring, and we've done The Johnny Remain. You know, so it's just going to be a little movie that we're going to show at Christmas, you know. Uh, but that was never, that was never God's plan. It was worth it, though. It was worth it. And matter of fact, someday when I'm long gone, when the Lord takes me home, I have my hair. So I'll go on eBay. So whatever we get for it, we might go for the next movie or for the ministry of Oakwood. So. Anything else you guys want to share about your experience? I'd like to say Merry Christmas, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> And this is my son. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs>